on board with this effort. Glendale Stone Point Community Church handing out toilet paper. Stone to Point Community Church stepping up to serve their community with a free toilet paper giveaway. Stone Point Community Church is giving back to the community today, helping distribute supplies to those in need. So join happening today, a Valley Church is holding a toilet paper drive as well as a drive up Easter morning service. I have been holding my breath for so many years. I didn't really know about God before I was in it very close to God. I was such in a dark place. Um, I wanted to end my life. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where to turn. My relationship with God was really shaky. Yo siento en mi corazón que eh, fue un llamado llegar aquí a esta iglesia. We've grown from poverty. Looking back, I couldn't notice as a kid, but now I notice how hard it was and how much stress my mom was under. I would go out and then just pretend to be happy. I would pretend to laugh and all this. And then when I would get home, I would just sit in my dark room, just not doing anything. I was molested when I was seven years old by someone who I trusted and someone who was actually supposed to protect me. Um, I came into Stone Pine never really knowing what my life was going to be like. When I first started coming, I was at like a low place. As a teenager, it's hard because drugs and everything that comes with that is hard to stay away from. If there's like a time like it's bad, in my life, it's for a reason. And coming here, I realized it was, I think I had been delivered for like almost three, four, five months before I realized I haven't had these thoughts. I haven't had these desires. I don't want to do these things. I can actually sleep and not have a perverted dream. first day we came in, it was like different. You can feel it, you can feel love. It's, it's been amazing because I know how to talk to God now, I know how to pray about it. I have not had any depression. And I'm glad that I started coming here because it rekindled my relationship with God. So after coming to Stone Point, I was able to get the courage and the strength to kick my addiction and stay clean. Everybody knows that feeling when you feel like everyone's watching you as opposed to when you feel like everyone's with you and you get the with you feeling. The worship, it's powerful and it fills me up with love. Renewed faith. Since coming to Stone Point, um, God has delivered me from the, the self-harm. Gave it a complete 180. It was amazing to be able to be connected with God in that way and actually hearing from him from being sad all the time and just faking a smile to like actually like it's a real smile now um you do come and you do get your answers it feels like home like every every time i come to, to some point it's something new it's i learned different things about god it's just a place where i can feel happy be safe once you come in you will never want to leave church is where i want to be for my future my name is Kellen, and this is my life made better. My name is Kaji, and this is my life made better. My name is Chris, and this is my life made better. My name is Talia, and this is my life made better. My name is Tiffany, and this is my life made better. My name is Anthony, and this is my life made better. My name is Lejay, and this is my life made better. My name is Elijah, and this is my life made better. My name is Myra, and this is my life made better. My name is Alea, and this is my life made better. My name is Matia Gillespie, and this is my life made better.
things have been revealed unto me by the Holy Ghost, which is shed abroad in my heart. Then when he reveals himself to me, there's nothing mysterious about it. He's God. He's in my favor. I am his child. I don't have to be afraid of him. I don't have to walk around fearing and wondering, is he going to take care of me? He is my God, and I am his people. Hallelujah, church. Let's stand on our feet tonight. If you're at home, join us tonight and stand as we worship and praise the Lord. Are you thankful for the name of Jesus? Are you thankful for the name of Jesus? Because at that, that name, every knee has to bow. Everything that you put under that name has to bow. It has to go. He has overcome, yes, he has overcome. We will not be shaken, we will not be moved. Jesus, you are here.
snowplow. You ever had to drive behind a snowplow? In my mind, that's kind of how I see it. Jesus is a snowplow. And he's fighting for us. And he's just going and going. And the safe place is right behind him. It's fresh. It's clean. It's paved. And it's good. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, as you think about that, let's go ahead and be seated and go into the announcements. Pastor Gene Herndon, senior pastor here at Stone Point Community Church. I want to give everyone a quick update. As many of you know, we have resumed services with a careful eye on the current situation and have made many adjustments to make coming to church safer than going to the grocery store. I believe the faith community is an essential service and I want to encourage you to express your faith by resuming your fellowship with like-minded believers as we navigate these unprecedented times together. Uh, as churches all over the country are reopening and safety restrictions and concerns are starting to subside, I want to take a quick moment to give you an update on the changes that we have put in place here at SCC and relay some exciting news. As many of you know, we have begun offering two morning services during the initial phases of the pandemic. We have now reverted back to one morning service at 11.15 a.m. Our seating arrangement continues to ensure that we are socially distanced according to CDC guidelines. All attendees will be required to use hand sanitizer and we have personal protective equipment available, uh, masks and gloves of course, whatever you may need, but their use is not mandatory. Our serving team will continue to undergo a comprehensive pre-check screening before they enter the building. All high traffic areas will continue to be thoroughly disinfected by our servers before and during and after uh, service. We also use a best-in-class electrostatic system uh, will be used on a weekly basis and this disinfecting process kills viruses and bacteria within two minutes and adheres to services for up to 30 days. This technology is used by hospitals, airlines, and major corporations. It costs us thousands to utilize this technology, but we have made the capital investment to provide the safest environment for you and your family. We will continue to adjust and evaluate as time progresses. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to our staff. We'd be more than happy to help you in any way uh, that we can. We are really looking forward to this next phase of our reopening, and we are so grateful for your support. We are looking forward to seeing you soon. God bless you, and we sure do love you. We'll see you again. It's very simple to give to God through Stone Point. Actually, there's three ways. The first one, you can scan the QR code. The second one, you can give us a call and leave a message on our voicemail. And third, you can visit us at scc.church, click the donate icon, fill out the required details, and bam, you're done. It's very simple to give online. There are only five steps to follow. Step one, go to our website, www.stonepointcc.org, or for short, scc.church. Step two, then click on PayPal or donate icon located at the top of the page. Step three, you are asked for whatever amount you desire to give. After you have done so, click the donate option down below. Step four, on this page, you have to notate what you are giving for where it says add a note, whether it is tithe, offering, building fund, love offering, guest offering, and so on. Step five, fill out the required details, then scroll down to the bottom of the page and click donate now, and you're done. Oh no, we're already out of backpacks. Here at Stone Point Community Church, we gave away 300 backpacks to the exciting. Uh, giving out to the community, people that need help. With the economy and the way it is, this is a huge help. It's like everybody is getting back to school and, and we all need help, so thank you so much. We appreciate what you guys are doing. People should not be making life decisions over school supplies for their kids. I believe we can make a difference. I'm believing in a mission to make a God-sized impact. And I personally believe we can do it. Awesome, awesome. How's everybody doing this evening? All 
right. Who's excited to be in the house of the Lord? Glory, glory, glory. We're going to receive our regular tithes and offering at this time. So, ushers, would you prepare to receive the offering? For those of you joining us on live stream, you can give online by clicking or tapping the donate button on, your web, on our website or scan the QR code on the screen. To give from your phone, to give from your phone. If you are watching from Facebook or YouTube, there is a link in the video description you can click or tap as well as in the comment section. If you are unable to give online, you can give us a call and leave a message on our voicemail with your full name and phone number letting us know you would like to provide your information over the phone. One of our staff members will contact you after service. You can also mail your tithes and offerings to our mailbox address. We ask if you are paying by check, please make checks payable to Stone Point Community Church. As we prepare our giving, I'm going to share a scripture out of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5. If you could put that up, please. It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding. The word trust in the Hebrews means faith, belief, confidence, fidelity, and devotion. We must get to the point where we can put more trust in the Lord and his word over this world system and our own understanding. Amen? And that word must be planted in our hearts. So, because out of the heart, the mouth is going to speak. Faith comes by hearing. So when we squeeze, the word will come out. Amen? And when it comes to our tithes and offerings, the word will tell us to give, and it shall be given unto you. The word will tell us to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. But, but the world system may say, or our bank accounts may say, or our own understanding may say, we can't afford the tithe. Which will you believe? We must come to the revelation that we pay our tithes like we pay our rent like we pay our mortgage, like we pay those utility bills, and that we pay it first. Honor the Lord with the first fruits of all thy increase. I remember when I first came to Stone Point, I had quit my job, I was working a commission job, and I wasn't making quite enough money to pay my tithes and offerings and to pay my bills. And I noticed that when I paid my bills first, I never had enough to pay my, to pay my tithes and get my offerings. But after sitting under Pastor Gene for just a short time, I got the revelation that if I paid my tithes and offerings first, then I could trust the Lord to make all the rest of that worked out. And I did, and he did. Amen. God's a good God. And if he did it for me, he'll do it for you. Amen. He's not a respecter of persons. So, but you, but you got to have faith, and you got to trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not into your own understanding. Amen? So the word will work if we work it. So if you continue to fill out your envelopes or your giving as we watch a short video. envelopes while we pray. Father, we just lift you up and glorify you and honor you and praise you, Father. Father, we are so thankful that you allow us to be part of your kingdom, Father, that you allow us to give that your kingdom may be expanded, Father. And Father, we give our tithes and offering as a corresponding action that we do trust you, that we're putting our trust in you, Father. And Father, for those who are who are tithing and is still tight. Encourage them, Father, to not give up, to continue, because the Lord will supply. Amen? So we just seek ye first the kingdom of God and your righteousness, and we know all these things will be added unto us. The word can't lie. So we just stay with the word. We get it planned in our heart, 
and God will supply. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. And all who agree said amen. Ushers, will you receive the offering? Please stand for more praise and worship. If you're not standing already, if you're at home, please join us as well. We're grateful to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords that he has blessed us with all blessings. And everywhere we go, we are blessed.
What's everybody doing tonight? Are y'all ready for some words tonight? All right. We come ready, right? How many here are really just, let's say, excited about what God is doing in this building? I mean, just think about just what last week we're doing the, the, the back to school drive and this week we get to do it again. God speaking word here. What was that word he gave us? Uh, what he gave the pastor? He said, uh, excessive acceleration. That's not for everybody. That's for here. That's for here in this church. That's for our man of God. So get, think about that. If, if, it, if it's excessive acceleration, that means it's going fast. It's coming to you. It's coming too much, right? And it's coming so much that guess what? The man of God is getting all that first because all the stuff that we got, that we should have got, he's getting it before us. So he needs to get some rest. And that's what he's doing right now. Him and Pastor Jean, Pastor Shana are both getting some much needed rest. So what I'd like for us all to do is to get together and pray again for them. Hallelujah. All right. Hallelujah. That's what we do. Amen. We pray for those above us. Hallelujah. We just praise you, Lord. We, we thank you, Father. We, we, we praise, praise you for the, the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We, we thank you for the work that you're doing in us and through us in this system, in this place, in this building. And that we take that, 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 that blessing out of the church, church into the world. world. And we, and we thank, thank you for our man of God. God. We, we believe all your blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings upon blessings. And I believe those blessings are overflowing. They're overflowing to us, Father. We're grateful for that, Lord. We, we thank you for the divine connection that you give given to us with our man of God. And, and we receive, receive that, Father. And we know that it's our responsibility to receive it. Hallelujah. We praise you. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give me praise. <laughs> All right. So I know y'all know. I know y'all know that whenever pastor is not here today, he always has a special treat for us. Today's no different. Tonight, we have my brother from another mother. Austin Manning. Give a great, great, great stone point. Welcome. spiritual parents of ours um, for obeying the call and for being diligent and uh, for feeding us and taking such good care of us and uh, praise God for, for great leaders Amen. and my natural parents you guys uh, you taught us what, what it was like to be a Christian you showed us to give and to serve and to attend and and uh, you guys didn't budge, and it was really a blessing, so thank you. Yeah. So, praise God, praise God. Well, let's pray. Father, we thank you. Holy Spirit, we invite you always. You're the teacher. Speak to me, through me. Holy Spirit, I pray every single person here could, could be blessed, could be encouraged, could be inspired. And we give you all the praise and the glory in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's see if this is working here. Yeah. Cool. I always usually guys read from the New King James Version. I think that's everything tonight. Uh, I'm going to start. I want to read in Ephesians chapter three. This is one of the one of the prayers that um, Paul prayed. He was praying for the believers. And, of course, there's a great prayer in Ephesians chapter 1. There's a prayer in Colossians. He's got some great prayers. This is just one that uh, I was meditating on a couple months ago. And uh, we'll start in verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory, 
to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Verse 17, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And then this is the part we're going to concentrate more on. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now, to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be the glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Oh, that's a mouthful. <clears throat> um, Paul went to heaven, had revelation beyond. He wrote the majority of the New Testament. And this is a prayer that I think sometimes we skip to 320 because now to him is able to exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. That's really cool. But you look at that and you go, okay, when was the last time God did exceedingly abundantly above all that we could ask or think? I've got a pretty good imagination, you know. <laughs> and, and they go, wait a second. Well, well, let's read before and after. Well, after it says to him be glory, okay. Before it says, it's talking about love and knowing his love. And um, I, just, I just love this prayer. I think it's vital it's, uh, for any time for a believer uh, and I think that as believers, sometimes we, we can tend to make things too difficult. We can be too hard on ourselves. We can, we can um, get into toil. We, we want victory. We, we want to make his name great on this earth. And we, we go at it. And we go at it. And, um, and of course, the nature of this world is get there faster, get there quicker. Who's got time for any of this? And I think this prayer, um, this prayer is important because th there are no shortcuts, but if we're in toil and we're trying so hard, sometimes we can step back and just seek God. We just step back um, and we want to seek the master. Because with a little more revelation of his love, with just a little more knowing him, just a little more security, and, and everything's going fast, and everyone wants to get to the top, but that's how we get there. And I think that that's why Paul was, was praying that prayer. Um, I don't think there's shortcuts, but I think that we can't skip steps. You go to verse 19, it says, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. How can we know something that's beyond knowing? And of course, we've been taught, if we remember by Pastor Gene, that word to know is talking about an intimate experience. You can't, God's love has to be experienced. Many of us experienced it the, when we became believers. And we're like, whoa, <laughs> like liquid love. That's what that crazy religious person was talking about, right? We don't know. So we experience it. But Paul said there's more. He's talking to believers, right? You know, that word to know is, is, is the same word that, that Mary, Mary used when she's talking to the angel. And she says, how, how can I get pregnant? How can I be pregnant? I've never knew a man. So this love of God, you know, it's one thing to hear about, yeah, God loves me. God loves you. We just throw that around. But to hear it, to experience it, is a, is, a is a whole different thing. You know, I think Paul said in, in Philippians that um, God has a peace that passes understanding. Same thing. God's unsearchable. So how do we tap into this? Because obviously Paul thought it was important. And of course, the beautiful thing about God and the be beautiful thing about this prayer is God's no respecter of persons. And it doesn't matter our childhood, doesn't matter our upbringing, doesn't matter our insecurities, our fears, our deficiencies, if we can experience his love, if we can experience this love that he's talking about that passes understanding, and then we're filled with all the fullness of God. Now he is able 
to do exceedingly abundantly above all we ask or think. And, of course, to him be glory in the church for Christ Jesus. Look at someone and say, I always wanted to do that. You hear people say that? I always did. Look at someone and say, I could do this all day. There's something about the love of a father. You know, I had a, I had a great natural dad, a, a, the best bonus dad ever. Um, and there's just, there's just something about knowing a father's love and knowing God's love. It's just safe. You're just safe. You, you don't need to prove yourself. You don't need to defend yourself all the time. You don't have to try to fight your own battles. You, you're not trying to carry the weight of trying to provide financially. Because if we carry it, God lets us. <laughs> and if we ever get tired, and some of us are strong. I'm strong for a skinny guy. You guys don't know that. You didn't know me back 20, 30 years ago. And we try to carry it, he lets us. But when we know his love, the timing, timing is easier. Synergy is easy. We're not, we're not worried about making our name great. We're okay with a group effort. We, we, can, we can slow down because it's not all about us. FOMO, never again. We can, there's a flow. There's a flow to grace and we can get in it. Have you ever met someone that was just high level? I mean, extremely confident, secure, humble, sharp. I mean, I mean I'm not talking about AJ up there singing. I mean, he's close. <laughs> sharp. I, I, I knew a guy, I had a client years ago. His name was Jesse. And um, I... I I just, I, I had forgotten this story he told me years ago, and I remembered it while preparing, and, and um, <clears throat> he's a black man, he'd be about, he passed away, he'd be about 85 probably now. He told me a story about 60 years ago. He went to Kansas City, he was in Kansas City, went to a, a movie, double feature, and he got done and he walked home, it was a beautiful night, he walked through a nice neighborhood, and the, uh, what are they called, the popo? The police picked him up. And they took him in and they questioned him for an hour and a half. They said, well, what are you doing? He says, well, I went to this movie. What time did you go? Well, about 6 o'clock. Well, well, why are you so late? Well, I saw two movies. And they, they, just, they just questioned him. They didn't beat him up or anything. Questioned him. Hour and a half went by. Finally, one of the cops says, okay, you went to this movie. Show us your ticket stubs. And he's like, I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> he had those ticket stubs in his pocket for an hour and a half. I would have been like, hey, here's my stuff, look, I did that, 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 right away. He was just the coolest guy you'd ever meet. And, and I'll never forget that. He wasn't in a hurry to defend himself. He wasn't worried about fighting this battle. He was just secure <laughs> in a new timing. <laughs> I wish I could have been there. Thought you never asked. Raising children. Knowing God's love makes us a better parent, right? Because they'll test you. <laughs> Will they test you? They, they, want, they really want to know if you keep your word. They really want to know if you follow through. They want to know if you're consistent, even if it's subconscious. And they want to know if there's a boundary. And they are testing for it. And once you fold or don't keep your word, that reinforces them to test more. Can we, get, can we get mom to waffle this time? She's been holding out, but she's on her last nerve. I can tell. <laughs> Come on. Hold out. This is how slot machines work. Think about a slot machine. I've never played one. A slot machine. You put it in, and you, you pull the lever, and you go, no, not this. Is it this time? Think about it. If you, put a, if you put a nickel in and got a dime every time, you'd make money, you'd be bored. 
That's how slot machines work. Why am I saying all this? Some of us have been standing on the word and Satan's pulling that lever, pushing that button. Will it be this time? Can I get him to, can I get him to break? Can I get him to speak against God's word? And he's pushing. And he's like, I know, I know it. I'm going to get him. I'm going to get him. And he keeps pushing that button. And especially if he sees you getting a little shaky. And finally, ah, this tithing thing doesn't work for me. Never works for me. This healing must be for everybody. And he's got you. But Paul's praying this prayer so we can get to that place. We're so secure in our Father, His love. Nothing can move us. And you look at your kids and go, you know what, kids? I know you're pushing, but I've changed. And it may take a month or two because they'll keep until they learn. And Satan comes and you go, oh, yeah, yeah, I, I can do this all day. I can do it all day. Bring it on. There's, there's a place. And Paul is praying this. And it's fascinating. So let's go through this. Rooted and grounded. In verse 17, he said that you be rooted and grounded in love. I think the, I think the Christians knew that um, the greatest commandment was to love. I think they knew that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than this. Jesus taught that. They knew it. Paul's saying this prayer that you be rooted and grounded in love. This is kind of like a starting point to the, the, the meat of this prayer. And um, love your neighbor as yourselves. But then Jesus, but maybe there's more here. Jesus, John 13, 34, he said, A new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. Then he said this, By this all will know you are my disciples, if, Who wants to make some money? We're going to start a new translation, the God's in control translation. We're going to pull all the ifs out of the Bible. If my people are called by my name and humble themselves and pray, right? We have a part to play. If you have love for one another, all will know you're my disciples. The word new, a new commandment I give you, it, it, um, a couple of the, the definitions for this word were fresh, novel, enhanced. He kind of was giving, I think, an enhanced, Jesus, an enhanced version to the love the Lord, you got the whole love your neighbor as yourself. Because shortly thereafter, he's showing them how he loved them by giving his life. And then also, John 14, 15, 16 talks about the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And so now, the same spirit Jesus had and did miracles and work, we now have. So now we have the ability to actually love like he did. So rooted and grounded in love that all the world would know, all the world would see. And, and the thing is, Satan's defeated. We know that. We're taught very well around here. But he's good at some things. He's muddied the waters a little bit. He, he's good at pushing our buttons, and sometimes we can be mean. You know, Pastor Jesus is in church. He didn't want to be a pastor. Church people mean, <laughs> right? He said that. If you, you know, he, and, and he's got to get religious people. He's got to push their buttons. He's got to try to convince the world that we are all a bunch of hypocrites. And not, non-believers can recognize hypocrisy, but they can also recognize genuine love really well. It, 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 love can melt the hardest heart. In the early church in Acts, they were known for this love. They're all in one accord. They all prayed in the Holy Spirit. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit. Could you imagine everyone praying the perfect will of God? Building, building themselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. The whole church. 
not fighting about whether they should do it. Just do it. Right? They weren't fighting about his healing. People were healed. You see what I'm saying? But check this out. They had all things in common. You know what that means? That means the pastor said, hey, we need a thousand backpacks. And he takes up an offering. And there you have it. Easy. They had all things in common. In the world, the church grew. And, and they were known. I found this quote today. They were known for their love. I found this quote today. In the, in the early church, the believers' love for one another and for others was so authentic and so obvious that those outside the church took notice and were amazed. And they're talking about the first and second century Christians. They had a, they had a saying back then. That they said, behold how they love one another. Uh, if you look at Stephen in the book of Acts, in, in Acts chapter 6, verse 8, said he was full of faith and power and did great wonders and miracles among the people. Verse 10 said they were not able to resist the wisdom and spirit by which he spoke. So they couldn't argue with him. When we're filled with the fullness of God and God's doing exceedingly abundantly through us, we won't be arguing with people. Because the Holy Spirit, I've, ne I've never had it. If, I, if it was the Holy Spirit, if it was me, it's a mess. Later, Acts 7, verse 60. They're stoning him. They, they couldn't refute what he was saying. They were not able to resist the wisdom and spirit by which he spoke. So they stoned him. They couldn't argue with him. They were just in a rage. That, that's actually, my wife and I have talked about, that's called a pre-learning tantrum. <laughs> uh, uh, people that... People that um, it, pe pe people that, um, there's a guy I watch sometimes, I, I've, I've watched him for years, he, he debates people in it for evolution versus creation. And he says every single, because he can science, scientifically disprove all their theories. He says every single time they'll get upset, they'll call names, and they'll jump to a new subject. And, and he doesn't call it this, but I call it from another thing. I've read. It's a pre-learning tantrum. They can't take it. And so they stone him. They stone, stone him. But look, look what he says. Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. He's being stoned. Jesus, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Moses, the Israelites rebelled over and over. And God says, I'm going to wipe them out. And Moses falls on his face. When we, if, if we can walk in that type of love, we will start to see exceedingly, abundantly, above all we could think or imagine. But we have a part to play. This love is the love that changes the world. Stone Point Community Church, always trying to bless the community. I love it. I had Muslim clients a couple years, a few years ago, and uh, the husband had can got cancer, and so they were going to move out of state. So we sold their house. They moved into a rental. And then I got a call that the wife had cancer, too. And they called me to come up because now they weren't sure what they were going to do. Maybe they're going to buy another house, whatever. And so I went over there. I'm thinking, they got cancer. I got Jesus. They know I'm a Christian. We've dealt together, and they had high respect for me. Um, and uh, so I'm prayed up. I go over there, you know. Get there, husband, wife, and then the brother-in-law and wife. There's four people there, all Muslims. And when I got there, the husband, the head of the house, is like, hey, we're Muslim. We believe in Muhammad. He started kind of, I'm like, yeah, I get you know, this is cool. You know. Because <laughs> they know I'm a Christian, and now they know they both have cancer. I don't know. He thinks maybe I'm going to start throwing oil on him and laying hands. I don't know, right? <laughs> and so I kind of... I kind of was taken back. I'm like, well, maybe we just sell them, try to get them in another house. Right? The Holy Spirit gave me a testimony. And uh, I started with a testimony of a very difficult time, to put it lightly, that I was going through 15, 16 years ago. 
and really I was dying physically. You know, I'm 160 pounds, 162 maybe. Picture me losing 20, 25 pounds in less than two weeks. It was a real tough time. And I gave them some of the details of what was going on because I felt like I was supposed to about the Holy Ghost. And uh, the wife looked at me and goes, I could never forgive that. And I said, well, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I had to forgive it. Jesus said, if I don't forgive, I can't be forgiven. That's easy. So if I've been forgiven of everything, past, present, and future, I can for surely forgive someone who's hurting me. Right? The husband looked at me, and he looked at his family, and he pointed, he lifted up his arm, he pointed to me, and he goes, that's what makes them different. And I thought, that wasn't the first time he, this wasn't a new revelation to him. He's a Muslim from Iran. If you're a Christian in Iran, you are a real Christian. <laughs> he knew what a real Christian was. I'll never forget that. Then, he, then I said, well, <laughs> I said, I was in bad shape. I was, I was really dying. And I said, not only did I forgive him, I prayed God would bless them. I said, but when I did that, I was instantly healed. Alone, I remember in the bedroom, jump, started jumping up and down. Couldn't eat, hadn't eaten in two weeks. I ate, I was fine, I slept for the first time. I was great, I was instantly healed. The wife looked at me and goes, now these are Muslims. She looked at me and goes, Austin, I know Jesus can heal me. Will you pray for me? This love Paul's talking about changes the world. Changes the world if we get it. And Jesus taught us how to be rooted and grounded in love. Matthew 5, 44. I remember 32 years ago, Mom, I called you on the phone. I was in Augusta, Georgia. I was having a problem with a baseball coach. No one really liked him. He's a nice guy, too. I don't know why, but he just rub, was rubbing people the wrong way. And I just, I just opened up, and I said, Mom, man, I'd only been a believer about a year and a half, so I'd read the Bible probably two times through now. Um, and, and I said, Mom, I have a problem with this. She goes, that's easy. Just pray for him. Just pray for him. Just pray for him. Jesus, Jesus knew what he was talking about. He says, but I said, you love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute. Verse 47 says, But if you greet your brethren only, what do you do more than anyone else? The tax collector, the, tax collector, the heathens do that. Then he says this, Therefore, if you do it, if you love your enemies, you shall be perfect just as your Father in heaven is perfect. And that, per, that, per, that word perfect, of course, means complete, grounded. Uh, in the natural world, we, we call it training in incompatible behavior. If, something's, if, someone's bo if I'm having a negative thought about someone and I just bless them, I can't bless them and have a negative thought. Right. 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 If I'm fearful, I speak the word against them. Right. No evil shall befall me, nor shall any plague come near my dwelling. Gives his angels charge of me, keep me in all my ways. I used to say that over and over until fear quit trying to get in my mind. Right. You can't do two things at the same time. Right. So if someone bother you, did something against you, a bad business deal? Maybe. A Christian do you wrong in business. What do you do? Bless them. Pray for them. Five years later, you think of it? Ah, oh, thanks for the reminder. Lord, I pray you bless him. Bless his family, bless his health. It works like a charm, and it opens up the door for exceeding abundantly, above all, if we do it. Gossip, negative thoughts, unforgiveness. There's two things that happen when you pray for your enemy. You fall in love with them, number one. You do, that's what you said. You fall in love with the people you pray with. I'll never forget that. Number two, God will now take care of it for you. And he's really good at it. Trust me. 
Trust me. John Bevere said this once. He says he was having a trouble with a, another leader in the church, and the guy was slandering him, and he was trying to go around. No, I didn't do that. And, and God said, listen, if you defend yourself, I can't. As soon as he shut up, God took care of it. Jesse had those ticket stubs in his pocket for an hour and a half. Kept his mouth shut. Oh, yeah. Here you go. Hold your peace. Keep the mouth closed sometimes. Jesus, of course, said, right after in Matthew chapter 7, shortly after chapter 5, we need to not only hear, but keep his commandments. Do them. James said, brother of Jesus, be ye doers, not hearers only. Complete, mature, lacking nothing. Single people sometimes are, not in our church, because we're smarter, we've been taught. They're looking for someone to complete them. Mr. Wonderful, no good. You need to be complete first. Mr. Wonderful needs to, we've been taught this, but I just kind of fun. You know? Mr. Wonderful needs to be complete. Because if you're not complete, and he's not complete, you're going to get a complete mess. <laughs> I know we know that, but I just want to say it. Then you get together and you think your children will complete you. Hmm. That ain't going to happen either. Rooted and grounded in love. In his love, we are complete, lacking nothing, truly. I want to go back to that testimony. Testimonies are great because people can't argue with a testimony. If they know you're of sound mind and you say, listen, you don't believe in God, great, but let me just, Jesus, here's what Jesus did for me. You may not believe in this church thing, but you should try Stone Point because you, you, you got to see what's going on over there. You know what I mean? Testimonies, people can't argue with testimonies. The problem with testimonies is we got to have a test and we got to pass the test. We've got to have a victory. If there's no victory, there's no testimony. Yeah, I was in a really tough time, and I'm just still in the gutter. <laughs> I mean, you've you got to have a victory. Satan doesn't want us to have a testimony. He wants us to waffle. He wants us to go, well, maybe God's word isn't true. Maybe he wants us to go for the quick fix. He wants us to get out from under the pressure. And then we just say, well, God's in control. So I guess, I guess it's just not in the cards. So you get in a tough situation. What do you do? Well, you, you do the word. The Bible says I'm healed. The Bible says everything put my hand to prosper. Faith comes out hearing. You say it. You believe it. The Bible says, I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed when I come, I'm blessed when I go. It's blessings upon me and overtaking me if I obey his voice. It takes pleasure in my prosperity. By his stripes I was healed. Send the Lord and heal me. That's it. Lord, give me wisdom. If you don't show me my part to play. Where am I missing it? Then you get the answer. Then you get the breakthrough. Now you have a testimony. And the next time Satan comes, you say, I can do this all day. I thought you guys had it by now. <laughs> Pastor Gene says, what does he say? Haters are, you eat haters for breakfast? <laughs> haters are the breakfast of the champions? Yeah. So now you, you, you start to learn how this works. You're rooted and grounded in his love. You're starting to experience this love that's beyond anything you could describe to anybody. And you're eating trouble for breakfast. That's what I wrote. <laughs> or how about this? <laughs> Sith, lords, Sith lords are your specialty. You guys remember that from Star Wars? Yeah. Obi-Wan Kenobi? Yeah. I'm like, he's a Sith Lord. He goes, Sith lords are my specialty. No, but it's real. 
because you're having some experience with the creator of the universe. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them all that obey his word. <laughs> Verse 19 says that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Think about that, filled with all the fullness of God. It's almost like you could read it a thousand times and try to wrap your mind around it. Filled, well, well, John said that he who does not love does not know God because God is love. So if you're filled with all the fullness of God, you're filled with full of love. And I think Paul understood the importance of getting to that place. If you're filled with the fullness of God, if you're filled with love, there's no room for doubt and unbelief. There's no room for fear. So you've got to get to that place. You're so full of his presence, you're abiding in him. And in this place, you forget about your own needs. And you don't pray so many prayers because you really don't need anything when you're in his presence. See, we try so hard to get somewhere. And Paul's like, that you would know what is the width, the length, the depth, and height to know the love of Christ. What else do you need? And you'll get what you need. And it'll be easier. And it won't take years off your life. Mark eleven twenty two 22 and 23 Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God. Now, I've heard that worked out and studied out by people that were pretty reputable. That, that, that saying, have faith in God, is have the faith of God or have God's type of faith. And then it says, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. But if you read that, how do you look at a mountain, an immovable problem that's been there forever, it's not moving, and speak to it and not have a doubt in your heart? How can you do that? Because you're filled with all the fullness of God. Because you're made in His image. We were created to do this. And... You're not running around trying to speak to every mountain. You're selective. You don't speak until it's there. We've got to watch our words. We've got to manage our faith plate. And we're not a one-man show, my Lord. In the United States, we... we, we It's all about your vision, and your destiny, and you become a believer and the prophet prophesies over you, you're going to speak to the nations and you're going to be a prophet and you're going to speak to thousands of people. And, and um, we can tend to get, um, we forget we're the body of Christ. And I know we're taught that very well around here. But we get selective in our prayers. And then we're worshiping God. And then out of our spirit comes that one thing. And we speak it and we know it's done. There's zero doubt with it. Speak to the mountain. And who does not doubt? And you go, whoa. And my wife sometimes I go, I'm going to proclaim something. Will you just agree with me? And we say it. And it happens. And two months could go by before we proclaim something, to be honest with you. Because I'm not going to just dilute the words. Let my faith be, let my faith be weak. And I think we just want to blab too much. Jesus spoke to the centurion. The centurion said, you don't have to come to my house. Just say it. And Jesus said, okay, your servant's healed. Jesus didn't go back the next day and go, I wonder if that servant really was healed. And Jesus said, if we believe in him, the works he did, we shall do also. We can speak to the mountain. That's why he said it. 
And we should speak to the mountain. I want to read this from Job. Um, this is at the end of Job. It's in verse 39, verse 19. Uh, God's finally having his, his and uh, he's telling Job, you know, what do you know? And I just want to, as I'm reading this, he's talking about a horse. I love animals. I do. And, but a horse is not created in the image of God. The, the horse does not, is not filled with the fullness of God. The horse does not have the Holy Spirit living inside him. This is God talking to Job. Have you given the horse strength? Have you clothed his neck with thunder? Can you frighten him like a locust? His majestic snorting st strikes terror. He paws in the valley and rejoices in his strength. He gallops into the clash of arms. He mocks at fear and is not frightened, nor does he turn back from the sword. The quiver rattles against him, the glittering spear and the javelin. He devours the distance with fierceness and rage nor does he come to a halt because the trumpet has sounded. At the blast of the trumpet, he says, Aha! He smells the battle from afar, the thunder of captains and shouting. If a horse can mock fear and run towards the battle, what can we do made in the image of God, walking in love, filled with the fullness of God, with zero doubts, zero fear. How do we get there? We have to obey. It's, it's not easy to pray for your enemies. It's a commandment. Doesn't matter if it's easy. You do it by faith. We got to get over ourselves, do the word. In John 14, 21, Jesus said, He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Verse 23 says, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, my and my Father will love him. We will come to him and make our home with him. God wants to abide continually with us. And when we walk in love, not just love towards him, but when we also know his love, this works really well. And he can manifest himself to us. He can fill us with all his fullness and do the exceedingly abundantly. Another way, another thing is to, how do we get there? To pray this prayer. Pray it for yourself. Pray it for your leaders. Pray it for your spouse. Pray it. God will answer that prayer. It's a, you'd never go wrong praying the word. Amen. Right? But hold on. If you pray this, hold on. Be ready. Because you might have a really, really tough opportunity <laughs> to sow some mercy and to sow some love and to bless. <laughs> oh, really, God says. You, you really? You want this? And lastly, it takes some grit. Um, standing under the pressure. Um, I, I've, I grew up seeing my parents and grandparents and great-grandparents, how they operated. And I've also had the opportunity to see the newer generation. And both have their positives and negatives. But it takes some grit. Are we here to serve him? Or are we just here for what he can do to us, do for us? Are we going to come hell or high water, stand on the word? And so Ephesians chapter 3, just before this prayer, Paul says this in chapter, chapter 3, verse 1. For this reason, I, Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles. P Paul was pouring himself out to non-believers. Paul was going to be a rabbi. He was a tent maker. He was a Roman citizen. 
If anyone had it together, it was Paul. And he got knocked off the horse, and he, he was a quick study. Lord, what do I need to do? I mean, he instantly caught it. And now he calls himself a prisoner. What does it look like to be a prisoner of Christ Jesus? Pretty much Paul, everything he had going didn't work out. I've, pretty much for me, I've, <laughs> my, some of my dreams and visions and my Lord, if I started counting the ones that didn't come to pass and are crushed and buried now, I mean, I'm 52. I'm, I'm never going to play Major League Baseball. I mean, I, God could do anything, but, <laughs> right? I mean, you know, there's not enough steroids in the world to get me there. But, but, but what, if, what if you're just staying under the pressure? What if you, it's just an endurance race and you're just wondering and you're like, Lord, I'm just going to take... I'm just going to take this vision I have for me. I'm going to put it over here for a couple days. And that person that you put on my heart, I'm just going to pray for them. That one coworker, that one neighbor, that one family member. And you say, Lord, I'm just going to... And you call them up and you say, hey, let me take you to lunch. And they're like, yeah, sure. So you skip dinner. You wake up in the morning, you start praying, you skip breakfast. And you sit down, and you're like, Lord, I'm just going to pray. If you give me something, I'm just going to pray it, whatever it is. And you're completely empty of yourself now. You're completely in tune to the Holy Spirit. And you might be hungry, but you're, you're alive to Christ, and you can hear the voice. And you only speak the Holy Spirit's words, and you know you're speaking the Holy Spirit's words because they're like this. And drool. And that's when you know, by the way, if you don't know, that's when you know. And you get done, and they're like kind of in shock. And you go home, and you're like, Lord, was I, I only spoke what you told me to. Was, was I planting a seed? Was I watering a seed? Was I bringing in a harvest? I don't know, but I, I spoke what you told me to. And two or three days later, they call you, and they go, thank you. And you go, oh, yeah. You can buy next time. And they go, no, thank you. I'm a believer now. And you're like, then you go home and you get a revelation. And you go, Lord, I had all my dreams, all my visions. They told me I was going to speak to the nations. But how are you going to speak to the nations? You can't be responsible with one, one soul that the Holy Spirit was trying to put on your heart to pray for. And you go home and God did the exceedingly abundantly. And you said, Lord, this prisoner thing, I never felt more free. And, and you worship him. <laughs> and his love so thick And the Lord says, ask me for anything. You're like, I don't need anything. I got it all right here. You can take away the debt, but the debt's been good for me. It's caused me to stand on the word. It's caused me to, to um, my faith, to be strong and enduring, enduring faith. Don't take that away. And what, what about that one struggle? No. That struggle has caused me to have some endurance. It's, it's caused me to... It's, it's taught me to how to bless people even when they're, they're hurting me. And you say, Lord, all I need, all I want is to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that I would be filled with all your fullness. Lord, my vision is now your vision. My vision now is my pastor's vision. And then you get it. And then you get it. And you never have another lunch appointment that's the same. You never do. 
You're praying in tongues. You're driving there. Lord, what are you going to give me? What's going to happen? And Paul, this prayer is powerful, guys. If we want to see the exceedingly abundantly, thank you, Father, for this time. Thank you for your presence. Father, I pray even right now we would experience your love. As Paul prayed for us, that we would comprehend with all the saints the width, the length, the depth, and height. Lord, that we would be able to step out and do things we couldn't do before. Lord, that the increase comes faster than we think and quicker than we know. To you be the glory. Help us to do our part, Father. Help us to recognize those opportunities that one person, if we all just won one person this week, the church would double in a week. We're here. We're your prisoners, Lord, here to do your will. Thank you for my family, Stone Point Community Church. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord.